Well, hey everybody, as you know, I've been doing a process on installing my Generac generator here and everything with the process was going great until it got to the point of ready to turn on and then all of a sudden it's Houston, we got a problem. So uh, everything's great now, the machine's up online, it's running, uh, everything's all good to go, but uh, I want to kind of go over with you the problems I ran into uh, working with Generac, dealing with uh, warranty and all the little tidbits of going through that process process it's not real straightforward anyway come on i'll show you well guys thanks for tuning back in to project next one you know here at uh, our channel it's all about knocking projects out one by one and learning as i go and sharing that information with you don't want you to miss out on any of the episodes so please hit that subscribe uh, be sure to like and share with your friends and boy talk about information i want to share with you man i've got a lot to catch you up on with come, talking about the generac it's not all bad uh it's just a bunch of different things had to go through and and I want to kind of fill you in, hopefully, by sharing this information with you. If you guys decide to get a backup generator for your house, uh, things go a little smoother than it did for me. So anyway, let's jump in. So guys, once we got everything with all the gas lines uh, hooked up, they uh, purged everything. When I say purged, they uh, get all of the air out of the line up to as far of a point as they can. The way they're able to do it here is they bleed it uh, off this regulator so everything is pure gas up to here and then the only thing left that'll have air in it is this last little part and what that means is is when you finally get to go to try to crank it it's going to take just a few seconds for it to fire up as it gets that last little bit out and and uh, then it'll go ahead and crank. So speaking of cranking, I uh, would not do it until we got the battery in installed so that was one of the next steps uh, the battery is located here on this side um, I can tell you it takes a type S battery it's which is a me, uh, classified as a medium um, car battery this one is 525 cold cranking amps uh, a 26 R now the R uh, stands for now the book did not call for this but uh, just in looking the situation over I knew that the positive lead was down on this end and so uh, on most batteries the positive is on this side so the R designation means they flip it in the uh the positive is down here and we needed to do that in this battery situation because this positive lead is just barely long enough to reach that so that was one of the issues we ran into but we got all of this mounted up and we were good to go uh, and so when I said Houston I had a problem I'll bring you around to the other side we were going through the visual checks and I noticed that I had an issue that everything around here was all wet uh, and what we had going on was this canister this is the overflow the radiator is just on the back side of here this is uh, the hose that goes in for the radiator and this little hose is the overflow that goes into a canister just almost exactly like what you see on the canister uh, that's under the hood of your car beside that's that's somewhere mounted up near your radiator under the hood so anyway this had a leak in it and I did not want to crank this up uh, with not being this with a liquid cooled uh, system. I did not want to to do anything to compromise my warranty and crank it up uh, with knowing I, with knowing I had a known issue here. So. Uh, Boy, this is one of the things I want to share with you guys because getting uh, warranty service out here uh, was <laughs> a process. So I will kind of bring you guys up to speed on what that was all about. So on these units, uh, this is brand new, never been cranked up. Uh, but when I went to try to get uh, warranty service going, they would not even talk to me. I mean, they would talk to me on the phone, but they would not do anything to start the process until I had went in and uh, done the warranty form signups, uh, filled all that out online, and done an act got the activation code. Until I got to that point, we couldn't even move forward. So I want to walk you through, because uh, it's a little bit difficult to find on their website. And so I'm going to run in, grab on the laptop, and I'm going to show you where to go to find those. So let's go inside and grab the laptop. Okay, guys, this is Generac's homepage. And to find this, you go down to Homeowners and Home Backup Power. And once you get here, you just come over and you go to the 
just put your cursor up on top of the search menu and then when you come down you see where it says activate your generator so you click that and then you come down here and you enter it's already defaulted to USA you hit next and then you enter in your serial number hang on a sec and we'll back out and I will show you where you can get that number okay mine is a 25 kW liquid cooled and it is this is over on the side that the battery's on if you come up in you can see the tag right here and what I did is I used my iPhone I took a picture of that and the serial number is right up here at the top and that's where you find that information so guys once you once you get that number you come in here type this in you hit next I'm not gonna walk all the way through the procedures through, through every single page but it's pretty once you get to this point it's pretty straightforward on entering in your data and um, entering in uh, all the information that you need to get your activation code um, definitely once you get that write that down I think it'll email it to you as well but um, Definitely write it down. That's the number your generator will not run until you get your activation code. Right, the other thing that you have to do before you can get any kind of warranty service is you come back over under the homeowners tab. If you go over and come down to support, right underneath activate your generator is product reg registration. And you have got to register the product uh, before. And so you just hit submit and this will step you through step by step on putting in all your data so you get everything registered online until you do these two steps cannot even think about getting a dealer to come out uh, to do warranty work on your machine so guys once i got all that information in uh, i was able to get with a dealer uh, that was a little bit of a frustrating process as well uh, i'll share a lot of information about that here a little bit later on but one of the things that i got frustrated about was um, I did not have a, a certified dealer do my installation. I had a local uh, electronic, electrical uh, contractor uh, do all my electrical hookup. I did all of my gas running, the gas line as you've seen in previous videos myself. Uh, we used uh, Davenport, uh, which is a huge uh, energy company here that does all the propane. And I can tell you right off the bat, after getting prices, I saved all over half uh, in what I would have paid a certified dealer. And I don't mind sharing with you guys the numbers. I am in this total install, not counting the price of the generator, uh, but total installation was a little, it was a little over 3,000. The quotes I got from the dealer was almost seven. So, uh, but the thing that frustrated me is if you don't use them, they're, you're not considered one of their customers. And so they put you at the bottom of the waiting list when it comes to warranty work. And I thought that was kind of frustrating. So I just wanted to pass on that information. <laughs> but anyway, when they did come out, they were very professional. They did a very nice job. They immediately found the issue, which was with the hose. It was not with the canister. They got all of that resolved got everything uh, programmed ready to go and fired it up uh, that was another frustrating issue that I ran into is we ordered this uh, for propane but I found out from the engineers that when they when these are at the factory they test run them on LP and so they shipped it out programmed for LP and let me come around and I'll show you what that means there is a device in here in this gas regulator it's a round disc orifice and depending on what kind of gas is coming through here it's a different size so for LP uh, it is a bigger hole than it is for propane I think I'm telling you guys correct on that I don't think I've got that backwards so anyway when it it did it did crank it did fire up 
but when it ran, and I know you guys are gonna love my sound effects, but when it ran, it was <laughs> it was just hiccuping, and they said it was because it was getting too much fuel. So I had an additional expense that that was not considered warranty work, and and it was not. I have no qualms or questions about that, but that was another expense that I had to incur was paying them to change that out so it would run on propane. Once they changed the the, the diaphragm that orifice out and put the smaller one in it runs and sounds like sewing machine and it runs great so uh, I was kind of frustrated when we ordered it to run on propane why did it not show up that way but anyway it's been a process but now we are all up and running um, it is now currently on standby uh, and um, uh, I'm very pleased with the final result. It will. We have already done the load test on it. I'm not going to, I would like to show you guys uh, the load test, but we've had this done quite a few times and my wife is tired of having to reset the clocks. <laughs> so I'm not going to put it through that again. But anyway, uh, it does run great and very pleased. I'm so happy to have this thing online now, but I wanted to share with you guys some of the shortcomings. Now, um, I will tell you that they do have a customer care site. It's an 800 number and they are uh, really great uh, with phone support. So if you guys have any uh, frustrations, uh, don't get too mired down and get really frustrated. Just reach out to them on their 888 number and uh, it's right there um, in the contact section on generac.com. And I will say they're very professional and they had the answers that I needed uh, for the issues that I had. And again, uh, the dealer that came here uh, it was frustrating having to wait as many days as I did uh, you know make no qualms about that uh, I work in the electronic business as well and we don't disseminate between uh, who sold what piece of equipment if it's made by our company and it's under warranty they get priority and I was a little frustrated at that but anyway they were very nice very professional knew what they were doing got everything resolved and I'm now online so guys just wanted to share that with you and so that kind of completes up. You know, I was thinking I would only do five uh, uh, episodes to this, but there's one more step to this, and that is hooking up the Wi-Fi and doing the uh, link, the mobile link. And I'm going to do that as a whole separate video uh, uh, later down the road. So I wanted to get this information to you uh, about this and uh, share everything I'd learned. So uh, I hope you guys find all this beneficial. And if you guys decide to do a generator, uh, just keep that in mind and um, hope everything goes really well for your installation and the unit that you, that you pick for yours. So guys, for now, that's going to wrap up this series on installing my Generac. And thanks so much for watching. Guys, you know me here at uh, Project Next. There's always one more, so keep on the lookout. I uh, post, try to do two videos a week, and I'll keep moving forward. we got lots of other things that will be going on. Uh, spring's going to be just around the corner, and grass will be greening up, and I've got a lot of great projects I'm going to do there. Lots of stuff with landscaping. I've still got to finish up working on uh, doing the trim work on my shed. So, man, there's lots of videos to keep coming so thanks so much for watching guys for now you guys have a great week stay safe and we will talk at you guys soon see you take care